Hello everyone. I know I kind of keep saying every time I do a video like this that it's the last one, but I'm hoping to God this is the last one. And I don't really go out of my way to make videos like this in the first place because I really don't. I feel like they're kind of the least fun to edit and I really don't get to put as much in as I am. But this is just the topic that when I saw it recently, I just felt really strongly about and I really want to keep start talking about it. And I know some fans are going to look at the title and be like, why, why are you doing this? Why, why, why are you doing this? And I want to make this perfectly clear for me because Postal 2 is unironically one of my favorite games ever created. I, I genuinely mean that. It is such a great mix of stupidity while also having just some fun meat and genuinely fun design and creative decision making under there. But unfortunately, what's kind of happened recently has just really lost my respect for them, which is a damn shame because again, I, I love these guys. I love what they've done, but okay, you know what? I think I kind of need to start at the beginning just to get everyone up to speed. So Running With Scissors is in a very interesting place when you compare them to other indie developers. They've been very small for years, ever since 1996 when they released the first Postal, Postal 2. They had two different publishers. They got screwed over by them bad. And then, you know, Postal 3, many people know, was a disaster. And it nearly put the company bankrupt. But it was thanks to a lot of fan feedback, a lot of the community, that they were able to, you know, put Postal 2 on Steam, update it more, add more content and such make paradise lost which was a phenomenal dlc that basically a, a sequel onto itself building upon what two did and pretty much just acting as just a general thank you to everyone throughout the years and even having a lot of prominent modders work on it and actually be hired by the company what i'm trying to say is for the longest time they've kind of had to have like a small like redemption arc more or less i mean a postal 3 it, it wasn't their fault because it was outsourced but you know that's besides the point but anyways back last year after a few like I think it was like two or three years. It was 2018, I think it went. But after a bit of early access, Postal 4 came out and it was kind of mixed to a lot of people. It clearly came out too unfinished. And I know Postal games have always like the sort of like jank to it, you know, the sort of unpolished, you know, like comedic buggy nature, I guess you could call it. But it was definitely, it was too much. And it didn't help as well that a lot of the missions, in, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinion, it kind of lost the sort of fun factor and challenge that 2 and Paradise Lost had. And a lot of the humor also just like missed the mark a lot. Like I know <laughs> the series has always been very low brow at heart but at the same time you know there's being stupid funny and then there's just being stupid and postal 4 it, it was just dumb it was just it, it wasn't funny it wasn't even like funny dumb if that makes any sense and it was disappointing for a lot of people and at the time i kind of like i don't want to say i didn't care because i obviously did i was a little bit disappointed but i was willing i still had some goodwill for them in all honesty you know despite the price and everything despite everything else going on because I, I still liked the game i still liked what they were trying to do in premise and everything else you know and on top of that as well, we had Brain Damage, which was the spin-off shooter done by Hyper Strange, which was fun in of itself. I really don't have much else to say. Well, what I'm trying to say is that Mingline Postal was just, it's, it was kind of in a weird spot. If you look on Steam, it still has a mixed rating. And looking back, it is definitely deserved. I remember back then I was kind of a bit more positive about it, which I, I kind of regret, but... But the main thing I kind of just want to discuss today is Running With Scissors' social media presence, which in all honesty, for the most part, I mean, for, for a while, for a while at least, it was pretty standard, you know, communicating with the fans, talking about feedback, updates, and all that stuff. But I mean, recently, it's always, it's been kind of all out of the place. And to be fair, I just want to say right now, I'm not trying to blame anyone. I don't even know who runs this thing. It could be Mike or Vince or whatever. But I mean, a lot of it has just been kind of shitting on other games, usually a uh, AAA game. Games, to be fair which i mean isn't so bad with but already <laughs> it's kind of a dumb thing to complain about other problems in the industry when already you cannot put out a finished game at all and a lot of people tend to agree with that and, and to be fair a lot of the stuff they did complain about was like you know actually kind of dumb stuff that you know has problems and is worth complaining about but again it's just already hypocritical coming from their part when they want to come off as the good guys of gaming and you know come off like they're so much better than them when really there's a, a lot of other games a lot of other games that postal 4 can be placed alongside in terms of having 
uh, very bad launches. And it hasn't even improved yet, mind you, okay? Like, I, I know they've been planning it, and they've been slowly updating it, which is good. I'm, I'm happy for that, but it also doesn't change the fact that it really shouldn't have happened at all. And I, and I know I, I'm one to talk regarding this, because I made a whole video discussing, you know, enjoying uh, games after they got patched after launch. And I still stand by that. I think, you know, you shouldn't be completely closed off on what you enjoy, uh, whether or not it had a good or bad launch now. Living in the moment is kind of my main thing, but at the same time, uh, I won't deny, I, I probably wasn't as harsh as I should have back then because I mean, one time is too much when it comes to unfinished games, really. You, you can't do it more than once. And frankly, I've I've been getting tired of it. I've been especially tired of waiting for things to improve with a lot of games. Halo Infinite is like a big example and everything. But, but anyway, so the main reason I really wanted to make this, because for, for me, you know, them complaining all the time while, you know, their game's still unfinished, that's, it's dumb, but I mean, it's like, I guess harmless. Because, you know, it, they're big companies. It kind of like, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, obviously, because I mean, it kind of does. It's still very hypocritical, but you know, it's just annoying at the absolute worst. But the main thing that really got me upset, really wanted to talk about this was, so about a few days ago, uh, Team Reptile, who were the people behind Lethal League and all that stuff, they released Bomber Cyberfunk, their big Jet Set Radio successor that was very hyped. Um, and they're a very small team. I think they only have like, like less than 10 people. And that came out and a lot of people decide, but of course, running with scissors, they go out, why the fuck would you charge for day one DLC? And the DLC is just cosmetics that mean absolutely nothing on the game. You're, you're okay. I want to emphasize these weren't like extra playable characters or whatever. These were just extra cosmetics for anyone who already bought the game and just wanted to go above and beyond, which isn't uncommon for developers to do, mind you. There's a few other big indie games already that do this, and I don't really see much issue with. Uh, Deep Rock Galactic does it. I know BattleBit Remastered does it. What I'm trying to say is it's, it's very a non-issue, and RWS being the bigger company, and because they, they have a bigger staff, and they've had more clout over the years, uh, decided to attack Team Reptile over it. And why? Why would you do this? This is not, that. that's not cool at all. That's really bad. And listen, you can argue in the first place that, you know, they shouldn't be doing that. They should just release the game as is, no DLC, that's whatever. But what I really just take the issue with is just the obvious punching down that is going on here. I mean, they have like 50 employees or so, probably more. And honestly, I don't know, because I don't know how accurate that number is. And then they're punching down on these people who spent all their time, you know, they spent three years working on this amazing game. And they're just being shut down because, you know, they dare to do an extra $5 just for that. Because, you know, God forbid they have bills to pay, you know? It's just so petty and stupid to me. Because, I mean, already, again, these guys actually finished their game for once. You guys still haven't. But it, it, this is such a non-issue at the end of the day. You know, this is nothing. You can play this game without it and miss absolutely nothing. It's not even, like, related to the game in question. There are Lethal League-themed cosmetics. And, you know, the Twitter guy being the Twitter guy is, you know, dying on the hill that it's, like, so bad for it, you know? We're totally fine when we do it because we're the worst game ever. And that's just another thing I just have a big issue with is just this big misunderstanding of just why the game got bad reviews. Like, okay, I'm not trying to say, you know, a postal game would get, like, a 9 out of 10 or whatever. You know, this series has always been kind of a mixed bag for people. It's always been an acquired taste. But when you look at promotional material for 4, they'll always wear that, like, IGN review as like a stamp of approval because you know they love it but even then when you fucking look at the review it's not even like they, they, they'll paint it like they were offended or whatever but no it, it's literally because the game was broken and it, it wasn't fun the game was not fun it was f fucking sucked like see l let me read this for a bit unlike the generally excellent commentary found in grand theft auto 5 postal 4 left me wincing for hours as it takes on heavy issues with the finesse and grace of a grease fire one mission had me launch mexicans over a border wall via a giant slingshot another had me reform some prison inmates by being them senseless as someone with perf practically no boundaries when it comes to comedy i'm definitely not one to clutch my pearls just because the game is making light of hot button issues for the sake of shock jokes but postal 4 does offend me by just how painfully unfunny it is nearly every step of the way wow they sound so triggered am i right the open world areas are empty and lifeless gunplay is clunky and unsatisfying and technical issues and crashes are near constant it's a veritable sample platter of everything a video game could get wrong you know clearly it, it's okay when you guys do it because it's a postal game it just has to be expected with it ign is just being a dumb game journalist yet again dumb game journalist moment 
And again, just none of this would just bug me as much at the end of the day if it wasn't towards a much smaller developer, that punching down. That's what bugs me the most here. Like imagine just putting three, four years of your life into this passion project only for it to be brought down a bit because you g gave an option to charge an extra five dollars just so that you can pay the bills, you know? And I fucking support these guys. I bought Postal 4 day one when it came out because I want to support them. I saw potential in it. I thought it could be a good game, but no, they'd rather just complain all day than take the time to fix it. And, and look, you can make the argument too that, oh, the Twitter guy doesn't work on the game, but still, it's not a good look. And <laughs> progress is so slow that it's kind of hard to fucking tell. I'm going to be completely honest with you. And you could say as well, oh, look at when Postal 2 first came out. That game was just as buggy. And, you know, that's totally true. But the thing is, like I said, one time is too many. You would hope the first time it happens, they would learn their lesson and not do that again. But but they still do. And they expect to get away with it. At the end of the day, I really don't know how to feel about them anymore. I had plans, especially like revisit Postal 4 and play it more when it got fixed. But honestly, it's going to be hard to even do that now when this is the way they're acting publicly. It's really unprofessional and it's made me lose respect for them i'm sorry and i know they're probably not even gonna care if they if they do end up watching it because oh yeah they fucking blocked me on twitter uh because of course they can't take criticism for the life of them but again i am saying this out of my love for these games and my love for what they've done over the past two decades for trying to do and and to just see them flush it down the toilet like that all because of one stupid non-issue it's just it's really painful i'm gonna be honest and you know it upsets me too to see you know the actual fans try to defend this i mean okay it's not a whole lot but i mean there are a few of them and it's really this this helps nobody you know indie developers Shouldn't be trying to, like, put down other indie developers like this. They should try to, like, push them. I mean, for fuck's sake, you shilled for that medieval DLC, like, a few days ago. Why, why the change of heart here? Huh? Th th that was a DLC too, huh? My point is, something has to change. I don't know if it's someone higher up on the chain that's running that account or something else, but it's not a good look for them. And I really feel that if this sort of, you know, fuck you attitude continues, then I really don't think there's going to be a whole lot of goodwill left. And I don't think anyone wants to see that happen. I think all the community wants to see these guys succeed, but it's it's really hard to when you act this unprofessional on a daily basis. You know, back up your words with actions. You want to be better, then you got to do better, you know? And if you don't, then, well, I don't think you should, should be surprised if some karma comes your way. I'm just saying.